Today's video is brought to you by my friends over at Raycon. Now, I'm pretty sure at this point you have heard of Raycon because they have been killing it in the earbud game. Why, Ryan? Why have they been killing it? Well, let me tell you. Thanks to Raycon, you're paying half the price for the same, if not better, quality earbuds. They have their own team of audio engineers that work night and day to make sure you're getting the best bang for your buck. Speaking of bang for your buck, you can literally get yourself a pair and a spare and be paying less than all the big name brands out there that charge way more than these bad boys. Oh man, sorry, I couldn't hear you. Did you also say they have 50,000 five-star reviews? Woozers. I like to listen to music all the time, so I use my Raycons daily in my day-to-day -day tasks like cleaning the house or playing video games or even just relaxing outside. And other than their incredible sleek design carrying case, they also have these custom gel tips that'll give you the perfect fit in your ear every single time. And trust me, these guys are not falling off no matter what. Cause they're that good. Yeah, mom, I know. I'm over here making big deals, filming a sponsor for Raycon, okay? I gotta go. God. Did I mention they have crystal clear call quality? And with eight hours of playtime on their everyday earbuds, you know you're covered with music all day, every day. So click the link in the description or go to buyraycon.com slash ASMRRyan to get 15% off your Raycon purchase and step into the world of Raycon. Thank you so much for sponsoring this video, Raycon. I hope you all enjoy it. And please, don't forget to smile. Now, how am I going to get four of these in my ears? Double the power. Hello, 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 and yes, hello to all of you. Welcome back. I am the ASMR Ryan, and today we're going to be doing something pretty fun that I'm excited about. I'm going to be showing you as you can see here, my entire board game collection so far. Now, I've been collecting board games for a while now, not too long, I'd say maybe four or five months, and my spending habits are uh, pretty smart. from uh, my gardeners doing the lawn. How dare you make my house look presentable. But before we go through all of my poor financial decisions here, I want you to help me out by giving me any kind of board game recommendation. Now, I know the Monopolies, I know Scrabble, I know the Game of Life and all the basics. Put me on something unique and fun. Um, I recently just bought the Texas Chainsaw Massacre board game from Trick or Treat Studios, so that's in the mail right now. But uh, if you have anything fun or a cool board game or a party game, put it down in the comments below. I'd love to check them out. So the way we're going to be structuring this little collection video is we're going to start off with some of my favorite board games and we're going to be ending the video with some of my least played, not so favorite board games in my collection. So sit back, relax, grab yourself a nice cup of tea, little snack, Takis, chocolate, whatever you're into, and let's do this. Alrighty then, uh, as you can see, I'm rocking the Dungeons and Dragons merch for this video. Not only did I love the movie, but I've actually been dipping my toes in D&D lately. I'm in the middle of a campaign actually right now. And as someone who loves improv and stuff like that, it's awesome, okay? I used to look at D&D and be like, <laughs> nerds. No, it's awesome. I'm a big fan of it, and I'm going to keep on rocking my orc barbarian character. I'm like a businessman orc. It's awesome. I'll see if I can put a picture of my character up somewhere. I used that. I used AI to get my character picture, but uh... anyways, board games. The first game I have in my collection that I want to show you is my favorite game of every board game I own. This is King of Tokyo. Now, instead of me reading you every single little rule inside this rule book on how the game is played, for each one of these board games, some of them I've played, some of them I haven't played yet, um, because I don't have enough friends to come over my house and play. 
For most of these, I'm just going to be giving you my kind of description of what the games are, and King of Tokyo has a pretty fun one. In King of Tokyo, you take control over one of many monsters. In this game as the monster, your goal is to either A, kill every other monster playing with you, or B, collect stars until you reach 20 stars, which means you are officially the King of Tokyo. Now, it's a pretty simple game, but my favorite part about the game is the fact that there are so many different characters. As you can see, I bought the monster box. In the original box, you only get four characters. In this one, you get like nine or ten, I think. With each one of these characters being cooler than the last one, I mean, a lot of these are like copyright type ones where it's like, hey, this is an oogie boogie. This is... What's his name? Boogie Woogie. They named him Boogie Woogie and not Oogie Boogie. Look out, it's not the Kung Fu Panda, it's Panda Kai. Oh my god, is that King Kong? No, it's the king. Very creative. But the best part about having this many characters is each character has a different set of abilities that you can apply in the game represented by these little green square cards. Uh, they're evolution cards that uh, show you at the top which character they apply to. This one is for Space Penguin, which is for this guy right here. Now, all those power-up cards can range anything from giving yourself more stars, um, healing yourself, taking energy points away from your other friends, and things like that. Energy points in this game are very important. Uh, they're represented by these little green cubes in here, and they're basically how you buy power cards and use power-ups and are able to kind of activate all of those powers that you have. You start your turn basically by rolling these die right here. I picked the orange and black ones. They come with two pairs in the monster box, orange and black, and green and black. I kind of like this one because it gives more of a Halloween feel. Um, and when you roll it, you basically do what it says. Here's an example roll. If I were to roll this, basically, it means that I can give myself two life points, shown by these two hearts, one energy cube, shown by this lightning bolt, and these little claws right here mean that I can hit every other monster around me for two hit points, which is pretty useful. And the way that you gain stars is by these numbers. You basically need to roll that number three times in order to get that amount of stars. So if I were to roll three, 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 I get three stars. Now there are obviously a million other rolls and a bunch of other things to talk about when it comes to King of Tokyo, but this is a collection video showing off all my games, so I'm not going to spend 20 minutes on just one. I would highly recommend picking this one up. It is a 10 out of 10 in the fun factor for me. It may take a couple rounds to get used to, but after the second or third game, you're going to want to switch to another character and take advantage of their powers, and it just has a lot of replay value. So. 10 out of 10 would recommend. Now let's move on to my second favorite board game in my collection. My next favorite game in my collection is incredibly simple. It is the perfect party game in my opinion. It's called Incoherent, Guess the Gibberish. So the name of the game is to pick a card out of a theme labeled by colors. Blue is party, yellow is pop culture, and red is kinky. And when you look at each card, you basically have 60 seconds, you flip this timer, 60 seconds to guess what's on the card. So I think it'd be really fun for us to try one from each pile together. When it's your turn, you pick the card from your designated category and read what it says out loud. The whole point is that when you say it out loud and not just in your head, you start to hear what the phrase is on the back. So go ahead. Say this over and over again, and try and guess what the phrase is on the back. Still got a good amount of time here, actually. The uh, timer actually stopped. Oh, I mean, I'd give myself another uh, hourglass, but do you think you got it? The category is party. Okay, time's up. It's Thirsty Thursday. So the idea is saying thirds, teeth, or stay, over and over again, 
Sounds like Thirsty Thursday. It's a lot of fun. We're going to do one with each category. Here's pop culture. I'll give you like 10 seconds. Just say that and let me know what it says. Okay, think you got it. Answer is okay, boomer. <laughs> I did get this a while ago, so it's a little outdated, but oak, ape, whom, her. Sounds like okay, boomer. And now finally, for the kinky category, now it does get wild in this, so I went through and I picked one that isn't that bad. But yes, there are some pretty wild cards in here, so beware. What does that say to you? Say it out loud. What does it sound like? <laughs> you think you got it. Shook. <laughs> it's funny when you know what the phrase is, and someone is saying it over and over again. Shook, heard, Addy. Shook, heard, Addy. <laughs> Sugar Daddy. Now, like I said, this is one of the more tame cards for the kink category, but it's a lot of fun. It's great. And I know I have uh, some adult fans out there. When you start drinking and getting a couple shots in here and there, it just gets funnier funnier. So, I would highly recommend Incoherent for a party game. It's super easy to get a bunch of people involved, and it's a fast-paced game that you don't really have to uh, pay attention to that much. So, 10 out of 10, would recommend. Now, looking at my collection, I realized we would be here for about 10 hours if I went super in-depth with every single game that I have. So, I'm grouping these bad boys in the party game section. Some of them drinking games, some of them just fun, silly games. So without opening up all these bad boys and showing you their cards and everything, we're just going to go through a brief description of each game, along with a little review of how I'd recommend them. Starting off with Tell Me Without Telling Me, which is a great team-based game that is kind of fun for the whole family. Basically, the objective of the game is to get your team to guess as many cards as possible in 60 seconds without breaking one of three rules. Essentially, you're going to have a deck of cards with a bunch of different categories, and of course, they have a not safe for work category, which is absolutely hilarious. Especially when I literally played this teaming up with my mother. Let's just say that there was a time where I had to, um mime something to my mom while playing this game in order for her to guess the card. Traumatizing. Funny, but traumatizing. You roll a dice that basically gives you one of three options. Number one is show, don't tell, which basically means you can't use words. Use your body, basically play charades to try and get them to guess that card. It could also land on number two, which is one syllable the most annoying one out of all of them. You can only use words with one single syllable. It's annoying, it's terrible, and it really adds that challenge. And the third and best option is freestyle, which is basically say whatever you want. Say literally anything as long as it's not on the card. It's definitely the easiest way to get your partner to guess. Tell Me Without Telling Me, extremely fun, really great for everybody. There's a not safe for work version in here if you want adults to play. There's a bunch of other categories like things, places, people, um, and it's just endless fun, honestly. 10 out of 10, would recommend. The next game we have here is Never Have I Ever, which is a fun game, but I honestly think isn't worth buying. Now, full disclosure, this was a gift from my cousin Christy. Thank you, Christy, I appreciate it. It was more of a home welcoming gift when Raven and I moved into our new house recently. Um, it's basically just things that you can Google. I uh, wouldn't waste your money when you're able to just kind of search up Never Have I Ever questions online for free. Um, that's all it really is. It's just card after card of you saying, Never Have I Ever, Eden Broccoli, uh, and then you just, you know, put your fingers down. I'm sure we've all played it before, but it's fun, you know, another simple party game where you have a group of people and you're all bored. It's a good game to, you know, put on and hang out with friends and kind of turn off your brain too. Two out of ten, I wouldn't buy it because you can just search up questions on your phone for free, but if you're a board game collector, um, 
doesn't hurt to have it. It's pretty cheap too. Next up we have Hot Seat. Now Hot Seat is one of my favorite games to play in a group of friends because the entire game is about who you know better. Essentially you go around in a circle and when it's your turn you draw a card and that person reads. If I became an overnight celebrity, what would I be famous for? And every other person gets to answer this question for me. So say I'm asking all my viewers out there, hey guys, if I became an overnight celebrity, what would I be famous for? Each one of you is gonna come up with an answer and we're gonna go down the line and whoever is close enough to my answer or my exact answer, you know, you would basically win the card and person with most, most cards at the end of the game wins. So thinking of my answer, you know what? I'd say the obvious. ASMR. If I became an overnight celebrity, it'd probably be because of my ASMR videos. So if any one of you said ASMR, you get the card. It's a lot of fun. It's a great way to learn more about your friends and kind of pick into their brain and see exactly who they are. Um, so this is a 10 out of 10. Would recommend. Definitely get it. We've got three, count them, three drinking games. Buzzed, which is probably the most simple one. First and last, which is a little fun. And who's most likely to, which is another game to play with friends. Now, before I get into explaining this game, I want to let you guys know that I don't encourage any underage drinking. I would highly recommend not doing that wherever you are located, whatever the legal age is there. Stick to that and drink responsibly. If you're underage, do not drink, okay? Bad. No, no juice for you. Don't do it. But if you are someone who likes drinking games, this is probably the best one. It's incredibly simple because you open up the box and there are two deck of cards here. And when it's that person's turn, you basically draw the card and read what's on there. Like so. Do you take showers in the morning or at night? Everyone vote. The losing team drinks. So it's as simple as that. I like to take showers at night. I would say I like to be clean before bed, and most of the time in the morning I'll go to the gym or during the day, so it depends when I come back from the gym, but I would just say team night showers. Um, and then we all go in a circle and vote, losing team drinks. Easy as that. Sometimes there are cards like this one, which I'll draw here. Quick, first player to finish their drink gets to give out two drinks. So you get cards that allow you to give out drinks to people as well, which is a lot of fun too. So that's buzzed. This is a 10 out of 10, super easy to play, highly recommend game for any party. Next up we have Who's Most Likely To, which can also be considered a drinking game. It's another simple game where you just go around in a circle, draw a card and say, who's most likely to, to think that they can freestyle rap? You guys go around as a friend group and pick the person who's most likely to. Um, I'd probably pick myself for that one because I'm always dropping hot rhymes. But let's draw a couple more. Uh, that's a dumb one. I'm not going to read that one. Some of these are flops. Who's most likely to order a frappuccino with extra whipped cream? Johnny. And it's as simple as that. Super straightforward in a fast, quick-paced game that you don't really need to pay attention to. Nine out of 10, in my opinion. I prefer Buzzed, but still a fun party game. This is first and last, created by the people who made Buzzed, which means this is gonna be a very simple game. It's essentially Buzzed, but you have to kind of do it in the sense of the first person to do this or the last person to do that drinks. For instance, this first card here says, the first person to do the happy baby pose gives out a drink. And yes, if you don't know it, look it up. I don't know the happy baby pose, so we're gonna draw another card. This one says, the first person to blow a spit bubble with their tongue hands out a drink. I've never seen these cards before. Let's go to the last pile. This one says, play a game of never have I ever. Last one standing hands out three drinks. That's a pretty simple one. And hey, we have the never have I ever game too. So last to touch a light, switch drinks. 
I don't... I'm, I'm recording with lights. I'll touch that light, but it's basically that. First and last. Some of these get wild, like the last person to text their ex has to drink or something like that, but it's a fun, fast-paced game. Not my favorite. I prefer Buzzed. Um, so I'm gonna go 7 out of 10 on this one. Fun party game, but not my go-to. Hey you, do you like arguing and fighting with your friends? You do? Well, Hot Takes is the game for you. When I tell you that this game straight up started an argument like a screaming match in my house with my group of friends, I'm not lying. Basically, this game tests your friendships and lets you uh, kind of take a peek into what your friends really think and what their opinions are. I'll just read the back here and explain how the game works. Hot Takes, the party game with spicy opinions. Test your friendships by sharing a hot take and battling to see which opinion reigns supreme. The first thing you're going to want to do is select someone to be the judge for that round. Usually if you're in a circle of friends, you guys just take turns going counterclockwise or clockwise on who gets to be the judge. Essentially the way it works each round is the judge is going to draw a hot take card which has an opinion on it. The example opinion here is a hot dog is a sandwich. Okay, the judge will read that out and each player is going to have a disagree card and an agree card. And you just decide whether you agree that a hot dog is a sandwich or you disagree a hot dog isn't a sandwich. When you make that decision, you place your opinion card in front of you. From there, you look around and you divide into teams. Team hot dog's a sandwich. Team hot dog is not a sandwich. And each team is going to appoint a debater. The third part of that round is the debate. Basically, you're going to have one representative from each team. They have three minutes each to duke it out and explain to the judge, a hot dog is a sandwich, a hot dog is not a sandwich, giving up as many reasons as they can to convince the judge. From there, at the end of the turn, the judge is going to go, hmm, I rule, hot dog is a sandwich, and that card will go to the agree team, which basically gives them one point. Um, it gets heated. Hot dog is a sandwich is the most tame card, I think, in this. There's some pretty uh, crazy opinionated cards in here, if I'm being honest, but it's a lot of fun. It's a great way to kind of get people passionate about something and screaming at each other and stuff, but you definitely have to play it in a group of people that can handle hearing other opinions. All in all, Hot Takes is a pretty good game, but at the end of the day, it's not really the best game to play at a party. Um, I would give it like a 6 out of 10, just because my first ever experience playing the game pissed a lot of people off. <laughs> Moving on to my licensed games. Now, these are all the games that I own that are licensed after a property, like Jurassic Park, Jaws, Universal Monsters, or The Office. Like I said before, I do have the Texas Chainsaw Massacre game in the mail coming in, and I think Dead by Daylight also has a game out there that I was going to check out, like a board game. Um, but starting off my licensed games is The Office. Now, I love this game because I've never played it. Um, I don't have a lot of Office fans in my life. Some of my friends are big Office fans, but I watch The Office maybe 50, 60 times, and I'm not even exaggerating. Um, my mom got me this for Christmas, and I love her to death. I know she was just shopping and saw The Office and grabbed it and said, Ryan would love this, uh, which I do, Mom. I love you. Thank you. But essentially, all I can get from this and what it says, because I haven't even opened it yet, like I said, you need multiple players and... No one wants to come over and play board games with me, but it's basically a game where you avoid getting downsized, which is basically getting fired. Um, it comes with a bunch of stuff like a Dundee Award, a dry erase board, cards, character sheets, you know, a bunch of different things. So if it were up to me, I think this game has to do with just knowing things about the office and, uh, being strategic, 
I don't know, but I would love to play this sometime. I'm gonna give it a 10 out of 10, just because my mom is amazing and Steve Carell. Next up, we have the Jurassic Park game, which is another game I have not played yet. It's by this company, Ravensburg, that makes a lot of licensed games like the Jaws game. Um, but this one, from my understanding, is you making your way through the park with your friends, trying to kill, capture, or escape all the dinosaurs. Mm, it's actually a lot more interesting than I thought. One player controls the T-Rex, Dilophosaurus, and Velociraptor prowling through the jungle to attack the humans. The other players team up as characters from the classic movie, struggling to get Jurassic Park back online and escape the island before they fall to prey. That's pretty cool. So it's kind of like a Dead by Daylight thing where one person plays the killer and the other people play the survivors trying to escape. Pretty interesting. It says this is up to two to five players, which I'm excited to play when when friends come over to play games with me. 10 out of 10, give me more friends. Next up is Horrified. And now when I first started collecting board games, this was the one game that I really, really wanted and wanted to play so badly. Ask me right now, have I played this game before? No but it's awesome. I need friends to play these games with. You need more than like four people to play this game. Come over and play games with me, guys. Basically, from what I can see by reading the back of the board is the monsters are on the loose. Dracula, the mummy, Frankenstein's monster, his bride, and more are on a rampage through the village. You and your friends are a team of heroes that basically need to take down all the monsters before they take over the village. That sounds awesome. And the fact that the Invisible Man is in this game, I love the Invisible Man. It's my favorite classic monster. So um, this looks fun and I can't wait to play it. 10 out of 10 because I'm a sucker for anything horror related. And finally for my licensed games is Jaws. Jaws is made by the same people who made the Jurassic Park game, which makes sense because this one's kind of the same thing. One player is going to control Jaws, while the other players are controlling characters from the original movie. Your whole point is to get through Amity Island um, without dying, and you have to take down Jaws. I don't know, but Jaws. 10 out of 10. Ta-da, we're here with the next category. Games, which in my opinion is like the, it's really easy to catch on to these games kind of games, you know, things you can bring out that don't need a lot of explaining. Uh, we'll start with a classic, Jenga. Now, Jenga is about as simple as it gets. I'm pretty sure all of us have played Jenga at some point in our lives. We stack up the tower. Each person takes turns trying to remove a block without knocking the tower over. It's a lot of fun. I don't like having to set it up over and over again, but it's definitely a really great party game that anybody can play. 10 out of 10. Next up, we have another family favorite in Uno. Uno is another really fun one that I'm sure all of us have played. You go around taking turns playing your cards until you get one card left Call Uno, play that card, you win. It's as simple as that. The amount of times that I've been just one card away from winning, and then I get the, the draw four, and then the draw two, and then they just destroy me by playing all the reverse cards and the skip cards on me. I, I'll punch a kid. Don't Get Stabbed is another really fun game. Uh, that was a gift. I love you person who got me this, and it's basically a game where it says here, you get to kill your family and friends for pretend. Essentially the name of the game is one player is the killer and the rest are victims. You draw a bunch of different cards, and if a victim draws three stab cards, you get killed. But there are different action cards you can play, like Kung Fu card, you are able to master Kung Fu, so you fought the killer off for one more turn, you know, things like that. But it's just a game where you 
draw cards and keep going until either you get the killer killed or you all die. One Night Ultimate Werewolf. Now, I almost forgot I had the card version of this because in my opinion, this is one of the most fun party games to play. It's essentially Among Us. Uh, a lot of people mention Mafia. I've never played Mafia, but they said, oh, it's like Mafia. Basically, you, at the beginning of each round, there are two um, sections of each round, night and day. Before the night falls on everybody, you get given a card, and you look at that card, and that card can be one of many roles. The roles can range from villager to seer to even werewolf. And the object of the game is each role has a specific ability and duty to perform <laughs> duty to perform during the night section. Uh, for instance, the seer card allows you to look at someone's card and put it right back. The villager card, they do nothing the entire time. Um, the drunk card, you swap your card with a card in the middle without knowing who you are. Things like that. And basically, once night's over, day begins and people figure out who were the werewolves last night. Now you can have up to two werewolves in a game, which is a lot of fun because you're working with someone else knowing that they're the werewolf. And by the end of the day session, you have to basically vote on who you want to kill. If that person's a werewolf, the villagers win. If you don't kill a werewolf, the werewolves win. It's a pretty fun whodunit kind of game that you can play over and over and over again. We like to play it in my Discord game nights, which is a lot of fun. What's that? You want to join my Discord? <laughs> Link in description. All you gotta do is become a Patreon member. A million out of ten, one of my favorite games of all time. The Blockbuster Party Game. Now, this is another one of my favorite games. I just haven't played it in forever. Essentially, you're supposed to team up with someone else, and it's almost like that game that we mentioned earlier, Tell Me Without Telling Me, where you have a certain amount of time to describe a movie to someone um, and have them try to guess that movie before the timer runs out, you know? It's a lot of fun if you know movies, if your partner's a movie buff or something like that. It's a great, great game to play um, when you're trying to figure out, you know, who knows movies more. It's a lot of fun. Simple and great for people who love movies, which I do, so I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10. The Hook and Ring Battle. Now, this one you've probably seen on TikTok before. A lot of people like to turn this into a drinking game, which you can. Um, basically, you have this setup of a hook and a ring, and the whole goal is to go up against someone 1v1 and see who can get the ring on the hook more. Um, it's really fast-paced, it's really intense, and this is the perfect game to whip out for anyone. Um, there are so many times where I'm at family parties and they ask me, did you bring the hook game? Did you bring that game? Because it gets everybody involved. It doesn't matter how old you are or how young you are, everybody can try it out. So, 10 out of 10, super accessible for almost anyone, would highly recommend. And finally, uh, this game that I'm sure you have seen on TikTok as well, it's called Bungie Table. I got this one on Amazon. It's a lot of fun as well. It's just whoever can get the most amount of pucks on the enemy's side wins. Once you clear your pucks, you're good to go. Uh, it's a lot of fun, fast-paced, simple, and anybody can do it. Another 10 out of 10. Okay, and here we are at the home stretch of the final games I have to show you guys. These games aren't necessarily my least favorite, like I said earlier, because I'm starting to realize I love all of these games. It's just maybe I haven't played a lot of these games more than the others. So let's get started with something I like to play online in my Discord all the time, Codenames. Codenames is an incredibly fun game that you can play with a very big group of people. I would recommend eight people four on one team, four on another. Essentially, the whole point of this game is that each team has someone that's called the Spy Master. Spy Master on each team is basically going to be giving clues to their team that let them know what words they have to guess. 
No, I know what you're thinking, Ryan. What do you mean words? What do you, you didn't mention any of that. I'm very bad at this, so cut me some slack. Each person's going to have, basically, there's this big five by five square of words. And some of those words are going to be on the blue team, and some of those words are going to be on the red team. And some of those words aren't going to be on either team. The whole goal for the blue team spy master is have your teammates guess only the blue words and vice versa with the red team. So the way you give clues is by giving them one word and a number. For example, if I have words on my team like snow, cold, hot chocolate, snowflake, my hint would probably be, for those four words, winter four. So that would let my teammates know, hey, winter relates to hot chocolate, winter relates to snowman and stuff like that. So it's along those lines. It's not always that easy, but it's fun. Now, I'll be honest, this bad boy is a 10 out of 10 when it comes to playing on a computer because it does everything for you. But in person, it can be a little, you know, hard in terms of setting up and stuff like that, but still a super fun game. Shout out to my friend Joel for buying me this one. Next up is something you've probably seen on TikTok before called Doomlings. The reason why I bought this game is because it has been all over my ads. Every time I go on TikTok, there's ads for this all the time. Um, so I haven't played it yet, but it looks like a lot of fun. Uh, I think it's like the end of the world, and you and your friends are supposed to give yourself traits and stuff like that, and it's just really, really cool looking. I've not played it, so maybe when I do, I'll give you guys a review on it, but the box is really cool, and they have an expansion pack that's coming out too, uh, so I might get that if I enjoy this one. I'm gonna go 7 out of 10 for the premise of this game, but I haven't played it yet, so that's not like a real review. Next up, we have Fire Tower. Now, Fire Tower looks like a lot of fun. Yes, I have not played this one either, but I saw a TikTok on this one and thought, hey, this is a really cool idea. Essentially, you're in a forest, and each corner of your board is a different fire tower. You can have up to four players play this game taking a fire tower. You start a fire in the beginning, in like the, the beginning of the game, right in the middle of the forest. And then you can draw cards and play different cards that help either spread the fire or get rid of the fire. Things like water can get rid of it. Things like um, gasoline card can help spread the fire in the way that you want it to go, which is toward your enemy's fire tower. I haven't played it, but it looks like a lot of fun. And there's a bunch of expansion packs for it too, so if I play this and enjoy it, I might get those, but uh, 8 out of 10, just because of the idea of the game. Next up, we have a game called Psycho Killer. Now, as you can probably tell, this game caught my fancy immediately. I mean, a game called Psycho Killer, I'm in. I also bought all of the expansion packs for it, which is Bloody Mary. It turns the game into a drinking game. Uh, there's an expansion pack called Gratuitous Violence that basically adds more weapons and abilities to the game and Psycho Killer Z, which I think adds um, new weapon cards and zombie abilities to the game too. But this is another game I have not played. It's basically two to six players and it's supposed to be self-explanatory, but uh, it's a fast-paced strategic game um, I, it's just, apparently I'm supposed to scan this code to learn how to play it, but I'll play it soon. From what I gathered, it's, oh, I got the chainsaw. I chainsawed you. I'll give you a review in the future, but Psycho Killer. Next up, we have Scategories, which is another really fun game because it's a fast-paced thinking game. Essentially, you're going to roll a die with a bunch of letters on it, and once you roll that die, whatever letter that lands on, you're going to go in a circle, basically picking a topic and saying everything that starts with that letter. So, I will start the timer, roll the die, and it lands on the letter C. And the category is Vegetables. 
So we'll go in a circle, quickly naming things before the timer runs out that begins with the letter C. So carrots, celery, cucumber, kumquat, <laughs> things like that basically, but uh, it's a lot of fun when you have a big group of people. This next one was another gift from my friend Joel called Telestrations After Dark. Now, I don't know if you guys played a game called Gartic Phone Online, but it's essentially Gartic Phone uh, in board game version. Everybody is going to get a um, dry erase marker pad thing, and you're going to be given a word. You're going to draw that out, guess what that is, give me pass your thing to the next person they have to guess what that picture is flip it give it to the next person that person has to draw what that is and then go down until you can finally understand wow how did we get from baseball all the way to pokemon you know it's it's a game of telephone but it's a lot of fun and uh, this is the after dark version which contains a lot of adult topics 9 out of 10. Thank you, Joel, for buying me this. I love you. Next up, we have Hues and Cues, a game that I have not played yet, but again, I saw on a TikTok and looked really interesting. The whole point of the game is to basically roll out this big board um, that has a bunch of different colors on it, and when it's your turn, you draw a card, and on that card, you are going to basically see a word. Uh, I'm sorry, see a color. You pick that color, it could be any one of those colors on the board, and whatever color that is, you have to explain it to the teammates without telling them that color. So, say I get red, I might say things like apple, blood, um, clown nose, things like that that make them think red. So, when it's your turn to guess, you basically put your cone down on the board, guessing which color it is. From there, whoever's closest to the original color gets more points, with the farther you are giving you less points. It's simple, it's fun, and it's a good way to kind of get into someone's head of, what do you mean you think that's blue? That's not blue, that's green. You know? So, 8 out of 10. Fun. And we're going to end this video on a high note with a classic game called Battleship. Now, I'm pretty sure we've all at least heard of Battleship at some point in our lives. It's a super simple game. And I got the electronic deluxe version with lights and sounds because I'm cool like that. But instead of me explaining how Battleship works because we already know how, I'm going to tell you a funny story. Now, kids. Cover your ears because Ryan drank the no-no juice. Raven and I one night had a couple glasses of wine. You know, we just want to enjoy some wine every now and then. And uh, Ryan had a couple too many glasses. So there we are enjoying our wine, watching a horror movie, playing Battleship. And Raven's calling out this number and that number. And I'm like, nope. Nope, you didn't get my ship. I only have one ship left. And she's missing it. And she's like, man, I've called almost everything on the board. So we finally get to the end of the game where I sink all of her ships. And she's like, Ryan, where was your ship that I kept missing? And I told her, it's a B7. And she's like, Ryan, I called that like 20 minutes ago. So, because I was a little tipsy, I didn't know where that uh, one was, so still got the win, boys. Did my thing. <laughs> 10 out of 10, classic game. It's amazing. And there we are, everybody. Those are all the board games I have in my collection so far. I know I kind of went more in detail with uh, games that I liked more or I understood more, and there are games in my collection that I haven't even played yet but thought, hey, that looks cool, so I bought them. But if you're not quite sleeping yet, I want to ask you guys for a favor. If you can please comment down below your favorite board game or suggest a board game to me that isn't in my collection and I'll check it out. I know I have plenty of board games that are on my wish list that I'm going to be hoping to get someday. 
Um, if you want to check out my Amazon wish list, it's in the description if you do want to maybe send a gift over. But I appreciate every single one of you. Thank you again for watching. I hope you enjoy your day. And please, don't forget to smile. Good night, everybody. I'll see you next time. <laughs> time to go play Psycho Killer. How does this game work? Hello?